Hi, I'm Glenn, City of Island Fish and Fuel Team, COAF Fuel Team on YouTube. We just got back from Galveston for our annual coast run to the coast in this case. Decided to do three nights and fish Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and had a pretty pretty good time. In fact, I still have my little deals on from the pier. Ended up fishing Galveston Fishing Pier most of the time, actually all the time, and mainly because I set up the hotel that we stayed in was pretty much just uh, within walking distance across the street and guess what? We were there. Made it very convenient for us. Here's some things that we want to take away from this trip because every year we go, we seem to learn something new and try something different and in this case, we, we got a few things that we um, took away from it. Mainly, call them lessons learned. So let's go through them real quick. Number one, parking access. So we found out that there's actually free beach parking access on the other side of the street. So if you're along the seawall near the ocean, there's paid parking that you do through your phone. I think there's some app or something that you use or you call or text. The other thing you can do is, at least over there by Jimmy's Pier or the Galveston Fishing Pier and Jimmy's Restaurant is across the street, there's free beach access. That was one lesson learned that we'll take away and hey, we always kind of flip flop between piers. And this round we went to Galveston Fishing Pier. Next round, we'll probably go to 61st Street, especially since we know that parking area or that parking access is free because, well, you know, save a buck or two because you can use it for some other things. Like in this case, that cart, that fishing cart, we picked it up at Amazon and we got the one that was the within the uh, length. I think it's like can't go more than 36 inches or something for the different piers. The cart made a big difference. We were able to put the tackle box, some other gear, as well as our ice chest, the fishing net, chairs, and pretty much everything there. All we had to carry in our hands was pretty much the fishing poles. Other than that, that cart made a big difference. We got about two, three trips back, and it's it's been a game changer for us. Just makes life easier going up and down the pier, as well as going to and from the hotel. Next one, that net, the fishing net that we picked up, pier net, several years ago. We finally got to use it. We've been taking it with us every time we've gone and not been able to use it because everything we've caught was either too big for it or too small that we could just go ahead and pick it up. But this round we were able to use it, one on another person's shark that they caught and brought it up with no problem. And then we ended up using it several times for some sharks we caught. Some we mainly just kind of lifted over the pier. Other kinds we, we use that fishing net. So that pier net is a game changer. And we also learned that, hey, we could all use it as a, a crabbing net, so maybe we might do that next time also. Anyways, we'll keep that in mind. Veteran discount or senior discount. If you're a senior, 65 and over, or if you're a veteran uh, and you show proof that you're a veteran, you get a $5 discount. I didn't do that the first day, but the other two, I did. So I ended up getting $5 discount off the $15 pier fee. So that was good. Lesson learned there. Spider weight. Ended up making those spider weights, and that made a big difference this round, especially since we made it ourselves. They can go for like three to five bucks in some cases. So this one, I think I made them for, well, I made a bunch of them, probably 20, 30 of them. And we ended up only losing two and that worked out pretty well. But the big thing about the spider mates, making your own, our fishing buddy was doing something a little bit different than what I normally do. I normally take all four prongs and point them upward and use that to drag and set the sinker and the, the rig that I'm using. What he was doing was pointing two upward and two kind of at an angle. So in case it flipped the other way, he was able to still catch the bottom floor and, and hold on to it. The uh, spider weight, yeah, that's another lesson learned, especially doing that little adjustment that our fishing buddy was using. Weedier line ended up taking up some, I think it was a 0.95 as well as 0.65 weedier line. Uh, was it millimeter or inches? I'll have to go look. I'll post a picture. Anyways, uh, there was an orange one we used, and then there was a blue one that we used. Hadn't used that in past trips. We were using ones that we made out as either seven strand or some other line, and that didn't work out for us. Okay, well, we had a little interruption. Our fishing buddy, Charlie, here had to uh, interrupt us with a little barking. Hmm. Why'd you have to bark like that? Hmm? Come on. Work with us here. Okay. We did a line. Made a big difference. Also... The Malin wire, yeah, Malin wire, ended up using a 108-pound test as well as a 40-pound test. Mike with a 108-pound test and used that with a haywire twist looking on fishing videos we saw on, on YouTube, Black Tip Fishing Channel we follow, as well as Land Shark Fishing Channel. Both of them had some really good videos on how to do that haywire twist and do that use that wire, that Malin wire, and that, that was a big one because 
didn't end up any break-offs, and we were able to even lift up some of the fish that we had because we didn't have to worry about it breaking um, what we were previously using. Really like it. Didn't have any issues, even could make some on the fly. We're on the pier where we had some break-offs where we snapped the line a couple of times where we need to make adjustments because we need to change the hook or the, the weather changed us or the tide kind of moved our, our lines here and there because it kind of changed direction. So we were able to make some adjustments with that leader rig. I mean, I, I initially started with about a, a three foot, four foot section and then pared it down to like a two foot section and then used that haywire twist on that uh, mailing wire. And and it was, it was very good to have that easy changeability with having to figure out, oh, I need to go pick up a different rig or buy another rig. And those kind of get expensive. I think we bought some previously in the 10 to 15, I think $20 range. And in this case, I made about 10 of them for, well, a lot cheaper than that. <laughs> okay, next one was from the times we fish. We fished two days from 5, 6 o'clock all the way to 2 in the morning. The last day we fished, which was a Thursday, from about noon all the way up to about eight o'clock. And what we noticed was first night we went, we heard that some other folks had caught some very nice ones earlier in the day. And then we ended up catching a few, not big ones, but the biggest one are, uh, we caught this round for our fishing bunk one for about 33, 34 inches. We ended up throwing them all back because either they were undersized black tip or Atlantic sharp nose, or they were ones that we knew we couldn't keep because we saw the inner dorsal fin on it and then other cases where we were just not sure so hey let them go and just be safe from 12 to 5 when we fished that last day thursday we, i think that was when we got the most sharks that that round um, we saw them hitting on the surface we saw them even jumping out of the water kind of biting things and whatnot and chasing i think it was mullet and and it was pretty good also caught some big hard heads too that round so uh, from a Lesson learned standpoint, we would probably time the day to fish around that bite more with the tide. I think it was low tide was around 12 something, and then I think high tide was around 8. So it looked like in that window between low and, and high, I think there was some opportunity there and some movement. And then I, I think what really drove things was we started seeing a lot of the bait show up. You know, we were getting whiting, croaker, and sand trout, and then we were seeing mullet show up. And when those showed up, then that's when the shark started showing up. Lesson learned. We'll, we'll play that by ear again next round. From a shark perspective, we got the black tip, Atlantic sharp nose. The big thing that I would take away from it is really, really take a look at the regs because there's some fish that look very similar to the black tip that would be a limit size of 24 inches or, or greater versus if it's not a black tip, it could be something as large as you have to get 64 inches or more or in some cases it's a prohibited species so you can't keep it at all. So keep that in your back pocket as well. Uh, our lesson learned, well we took the pictures from Texas Parks and Wildlife, we had it handy, we were able to look at things and we knew for sure that there were some that we could not keep. But anytime we were kind of if we ended up letting them go. In the end we didn't keep any at all. You know, cotton released. But still a fun time. The last takeaway lesson learned is fish bites. That, that was a big one for us. We ended up bringing shad Bought some squid and some somebody gave us some bait shrimp and we're using that to catch our bait. We were trying for those whiting, the croaker, and the sand trout. And in the end, it was those fish bites that made a big difference. They they were the ones that allowed us to get the steady, fresh bait of either whiting, croaker, and sand trout. And what we noticed is the sand trout seemed to be the one that got hit the most. Additionally, once we figured out, or at least our fishing buddy figured out that when you use the head portion, leave a little bit of the meat section behind it and then put your hook right in that meat section because they tended to hit behind it versus the head part and we were getting an increased hookup right there. Especially when we were using the tail section, we were driving the hook deeper into the body self or length of the body and letting the hook point right up and seemed to get better better um, hookup rates there as well. A little plus one on that one. All right, that's pretty much all we had this round. Some lessons learned for this trip to Galveston Fishing Pier. We're not experts, just average Joes, but we definitely learn from uh, how we fish and learn from our trials and errors. Hopefully you can uh, take away some good ones when you go down there and maybe catch a shark or two. Okay, all for now and do check back. We've got some other videos that we'll be working through, especially this summer season. Probably do some more kayak fishing. And well, we got those two pier rods. Those turned out really well. 
little six foot size rod was a game changer for us using that Pensacola 15 because definitely we're able to bring in the fish and even the bigger ones didn't feel undergunned with the six foot size fishing pole. All right, all for now. Next time, catch you later. Good luck and good fishing.